All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we have a remarkable opportunity today. And uh, joining us, we have former Assumption graduates, Assumption graduates who went through the IB program. Um, and Ms. Kassani will, uh, will be introducing them individually uh, before they talk to you. But just so you, uh, you get an idea of what we're trying to do, uh, we realize the, the stress that you might be under, uh, the incredible amount of work that you engage in on a daily basis. And um, in order to keep you motivated, in order to hopefully help you see that light at the end of the tunnel, I mean, I can sit, stand up here and talk to you all day long about the benefits of what you're doing. But really, uh, experience and the experience of your peers, we believe, is invaluable. So we've asked uh, former graduates, uh, students who were in your shoes not very long ago, to come back and to give us their insights, give us an idea of uh, things that you know, they found quite useful in helping them to navigate uh, you know, the very busy life of a student, an assumption student, and uh, particularly, in particular, an assumption IB student. So I would, uh, without further ado, uh, like you to uh, to give them a very warm welcome, and at this time I will ask uh, Ms. Castagna to come on up here and to introduce them individually. The format is they will uh, basically give us a, a, a short talk, and uh, it's my understanding at the end the panel will be available to you for your own questions. So hopefully, while they are speaking, you will formulate some questions. Uh, hopefully, you already have some questions in mind. And uh, again, this is for your benefit. Uh, everybody's an individual, but you can certainly learn from other, uh, other people's experiences. So uh, we hope that you do that today. The, uh, the taping will be available online uh, for anybody who wants to view that, maybe with uh, family members who are considering the ID or with, uh, with parents as well. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you to our speakers who have uh, so graciously Hi everyone, welcome to Assumption's first IB Graduate TED Talks. Um, we're very lucky today to have four guests with us who are graduates from Assumption here to talk to you about their experience and, uh, and now that they've gone on to university, uh, how, what they've done with the IB program since then. So I'll introduce our panel. Uh, first up we have Gloria Zeng. She's a graduate uh, from 2013 and she's currently studying at Duke University. We also have Jada Larkin, also a graduate from 2013, studying at University of British Columbia. We also have Nicolette Santilli, graduate of 2013, studying at Wayne State University. And we have Ryan Chan, graduate of 2010, studying at McGill University. So at this point, without further ado, I'll call up Gloria to give you her talk. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to be back and to be here with everybody. Um, I've just finished my first semester at Duke University, and I couldn't be happier now that exams are over. Um, my first semester has been honestly a whirlwind of activities, um, from going to basketball games, uh, meeting kids from all over the states, and settling into my dorm. It's been a wonderful experience, and I'm so excited that I get to share some of that with you guys today. Um, the other day, I was talking to one of my best friends in the dorm. He's from Rwanda, Africa, and when we were talking, he suddenly mentioned how he completed this extended essay the night before it was due. And that sounded really familiar to me because it's something that I also did, <laughs> but it's not advisable. And so I was really surprised. I stopped. I asked him, Aristide, you did IB too? And he shrugged, he was just like, yeah, I took HL physics, math, and chemistry. And surprisingly enough, that's a really common experience at my university, where all the international kids have taken IB courses before. And whether they're from South Africa, France, England, you name it, they're from all over the world. So when I was in high school, I honestly thought there was no one doing IB. Um, I mean, you always hear of kids doing it, international kids, but it's really hard to relate to those people when we're the only school doing it in the county and we're the only school doing it in the school board. Um, it's even hard to relate to kids going to other high schools. And honestly,
Honestly, I found it very hard to appreciate the IB program while I was actually in it. But um, at Duke, I'm surrounded by some of the brightest students in the country. So there's a girl in my class that's coded a diagnosis program for breast cancer with a 98% success rate. There's also a girl who's a world champion cup stacker, and she's, fe she's featured in a Skrillex song. Um, but surprisingly enough, we're all academic equals, and that's something I'm gonna give a large credit for to the IB program. The IB program is gonna open a lot of doors for you, whether you wanna stay for university in Canada or go to the US like I did. Um, it's really gonna make the transition from high school to university seem easy, I promise. So, for example, when I entered my math class at Duke, um, my teacher was really impressed with the strong foundation in calculus that I already had. And a lot of other kids at university have never written a science lab before. And how many of those have we done? So a lot of the work ethics and habits that you pick up, a lot of the material that you're gonna cover in high school, you're gonna see in university, and it's gonna make it become a really comfortable and easy transition. Um, another thing, I know it seems like you guys are very stressed, very busy, tired all the time, but there are so many things that you can do to make the program a little easier on yourself. One of the most helpful things I found was just to go online and find a bunch of old practice exams, notes that other students had written, or even practice tests to do before the tests in class. Um, I think another really helpful thing was also just talking to older students who have been there and gone through the same thing as you guys. Um, so I guess my last piece of advice for you guys is to really make the most of your time here. I guarantee you're gonna miss it. And as I'm looking out in the crowd, I see a lot of familiar faces and wonderful people that I've met here. And I promise that I'm always here for you guys if you ever need to talk. So thank you. Okay, at this point, uh, I'd like to call up Jada Larkin uh, to talk to you about his story. All right, everyone, before we get started, uh, I need you all to help me out with something real quick. Um, can everybody go like this? Can you all go? So, um, back in grade 8 a few years ago, there was this little boy, curly hair, glasses thought he was a little sweet, walked around, thought he was cool. Went into grade 9 at Kennedy, and things were okay. You know, I liked the school, but I felt like I wasn't pushed enough. So, transferred to Assumption in grade 10, and I went into the IP program. It's challenging, a little difficult. Tried to work my way through it. Mr. Musardi can testify this math wasn't my best subject, as some of you may find, or some other subjects aren't your best subjects, we need to push through it. So there's three things I want to talk about. There's choices, there's sacrifice, and there's self-awareness and global awareness. So the choices that you make now will affect you in your, in your future. And nor if they're good or bad, but you want to make the best of them. Just like I did. In grade 10, I struggled, but I did it. I put dedication, and I pushed through it, and I worked through it, and I got there. And I'm, I got to the university I wanted to be. So you, no matter what choices you make, you will get where you want to be. You just have to work for it. Also, the relationships that you make now will affect you later on in your future. So no matter how much stress you go under, how much pressure is on you, make sure you're kind to one another. Make sure that you share friendships and advice with one another. And if you see someone needs help, pick them up, help them up, give them a nice hand or a nice saying. And that's what helped us all through it. We all were a community with each other and all helped each other through it. Um, also, sacrifice. Know that you will have to sacrifice time, sleep, even though you don't want to. You have to be dedicated to what you want to do. And with sacrifice comes reward. And that's one thing I really, really want to stress. Um, also, self-awareness and global awareness. Know that this program is not only about your grades, even though I know now, for us being in it, you thought that your grades were everything. That's how you were going to get into university. Uh, that's basically how you're going to start your career. But that's only one facet of this program. A greater facet is the awareness of who you are and also what you're trying to strive to be and, and a greater aspect of what you can do globally to help those around you. So um, I want to say that, so through my journey through grade 10, I made it through grade 11. For all the grade 11s out here, 
this is your transition year into a bigger picture. So when you go into grade 11, or if you are in grade 11, you should know that when you move to grade 12, be prepared to work hard. Be prepared to be dedicated. But you should also be prepared to look forward to a wonderful year of your peers. Look forward to things like prom, semi-formals, and all those things that help you relax and get rid of all the stress that you're going to be under. When, if you're in grade 12, know that this time, this stress and this pressure, well, it'll be further, you'll have that stress and that pressure in university, but it'll be lessened. You'll be prepared, as Gloria testified to, as I will testify to, that in my labs, um, I'm so used to working with the equipment and doing the things that I've done, that it's been a breeze for me. Now, that may not be the case for you, but that's okay. Know that you have to be self-aware of what your habits are and what your problems are, and know that, be aware of them and how to work towards them and how to fix them. Uh, I'd also like to talk about uh, my university experiences. Um, I, like, we all got into our university that we want to get into, and if you don't, that's perfectly fine. No matter what your education, no matter where you go, you're going to get the education you want, so don't worry about that. And also, uh, university is a wonderful time, and you will look forward to it. And just once you get through this passage of your life, it'll, you'll look back on these times and have and be thankful for it. And that's why I want you guys to really understand is that even though it seems hard now, because I was in your shoes, it seems hard now, and you don't want to listen to people who are around you who think, oh yeah, they don't know what they're talking about kind of thing. Like grades are the most important thing to me right now. It is at this point, but once you get past it, you'll look on and you'll be like, no, it wasn't. It was the moments that I shared with everybody around me. It's how they affected me in my life, and grades are secondary. And I want you to really understand that it's a loving community and a legacy that you're leaving at the school, because the school has built a legacy for all of us, and you want to fulfill those shoes who have, been, who have already filled the ones that you have stepped into. So I want to leave you with this. Um, Make good choices and be prepared for them. Um, be very self-aware of what, you, what you're doing towards others, how you're going to prepare for your future, and know that this program is more than just your grade. It's a global awareness that you should, that I wasn't aware of when I was in your shoes, but as I got older and now that I look back on it, it is way more than, than just what you're, you're acting. Hi guys, um, my name is Nicolette, like Ms. Castagna said, um, it's really nice to be back here. Not particularly during this time though, because I remember last year that the, the, the months leading up to the Christmas break, sorry, the weeks leading up to the Christmas break were probably some of the hardest for me. I had the extended essay, the prescribed title, the piling um, time responses that seemed to just never end, the labs, everything. Um, so I really, when I say that I was there, um, I really was there where you guys are right now, and I'm stressing just as much as you guys were, but um, it's important to just, I know it sounds a lot easier, but just to work through it, because one of the struggles that I had during IB was doing the extended essay and the prescribed title and knowing it didn't count toward my OSSD average, and that's where the marks that I was applying for to university, so that was kind of my struggle, like why am I de designating so much time toward these assessments? And, you know, prospective universities may not even see them. But what I kind of failed to realize in the long run was how beneficial and how much you can take from the extended essay and the, pres and the prescribed title and all the, the IB assessments in general, actually. So the extended essay, you might think, oh my god, no other high school student has to write this long of a paper. But sorry to break it to you guys, long essays don't end. And, you know, I'm in first year university right now, and I just completed a paper that was actually a thousand words longer than the extended essay. And a lot of people at Wayne State didn't have that kind of exposure to an essay like that, but I did. So it was definitely a better transition into writing that difficult of a paper. Same with the prescribed title. So I'm in pre-pharmacy right now, and I'll touch a little bit more on my university program after. But I thought, you know what, Like I'm really not interested in philosophy. That's not my thing. Well, a lot of pre-med and pre-pharmacy or whatever program you're going into, they require you to take a lot of humanities credits. So actually, one of the classes I had to take um, this semester was the philosophy of Detroit. So it was 
it was definitely a really good segue because I was familiar with some of the concept we, concepts we talked about in class. So solidifying those concepts in a paper is really going to help you guys because it helped me a lot. Um, so kind of back to what I was talking about how this year, this time of year is really stressful. So myself personally, I was going through a lot. I had, like I said, all the IB assessments and I also had, I was working three jobs. So I was a French tutor, I was um, a fitness instructor and I was also a lifeguard. So that was kind of like extracurriculars that were piling up on me. And I also found out three weeks before the test date that I had to write the ACTs. And that was a one-time thing for me and that kind of made or break my university acceptance into pharmacy at Wayne State. So I was under a lot of pressure. So the one thing I can really say is to just talk to people, like talk to people who've gone through it. If I just would have like, you know, maybe picked up the phone and called someone older, you know, Facebook message someone who's written their ACTs, I would have known that certain universities need that. But I kind of shut myself out because I was like, I don't have time to talk to anyone. I have to do everything. And, and I lost that bigger picture talking to people and learning certain things that I have to do. So that's kind of like my advice um, is to, to, to just talk to other people because so many older students who have gone through this have so much to offer you and you don't realize it until you actually talk to someone. Um, so kind of where I feel that IB has benefited me is I'm in like a guaranteed acceptance pharmacy program. So I have to maintain my GPA and they like kick me right into, not kick me, move me right into pharmacy school. So that's, that's a lot of pressure. Um, knowing that if you don't hit that 3.6 or that 3.5 or whatever it is, that you're gone. And you know what? That's something a lot of the people in my program, even though they're, you know, they're some of the, the smartest kids that apply, can't deal with. And there's a couple girls in my program who, who don't think they hit that GPA this semester because they were cracking under the pressure. But that's something that I definitely learned how to deal with in IB. Um, you know, you have a million things to do, and somehow maybe you cut back on sleep a little bit, but you make it happen. And you know, life's not easy, and IB's not easy either, but you just have to really power through it because it's going to pay off. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm working hard in university, and I'm seeing the results, and like, like I said, that was something, you know, I had, a, I had a hard time seeing in high school. You know, you always think that your marks are so low and this and that, but when you get into university, you realize that how prepared you are and, like, the work habits that you've developed. I think my class average in biology right now is, like, a D minus. So, you know, if you guys know how to sit down and do your work, you're going to do well. And you take that for granted sometimes because, you know, not everyone has the, the you know, the self-discipline to sit down and open that textbook and read. And you do, you don't even realize it. And I, I feel like I was really hard on myself last year that, you know, I, I didn't realize what great work habits I developed. So that's kind of um, my story. So hopefully, you know, I was able to relate to a lot of you guys and tell you it, it will get, it will get a lot better. Um, you guys are going to go into first year university and realize you're so much more prepared than a lot of the other students are, and it's going to pay off. And, you know, you're going to be proud of the board. <laughs> okay, last up on the panel, we have Ryan Chan to give you his talk. Okay, guys. So, um, I don't know if any of you guys know me. I graduated, as Ms. Casania said, back in 2010, so I'm a little bit dated. Um, all you guys were in grade school back then. Uh, but I'll try to give you a little bit of perspective about how IB has really helped me. Uh, throughout my three years of university now, and um, how I've really benefited from uh, its, its uh, features. Um, so there's two really main things I want to talk about with IB. Uh, the first is the tools that it really provides you uh, in giving you the preparation that you need to succeed in university. And the second main thing is the group of people that you guys are really fortunate to have uh, at this school and um, how you can all work together and be with like-minded people so that you can succeed in whatever career choice you end up doing. Um, so the first thing, as the other three panelists mentioned a lot, is a lot of the work might seem really, really tough and you might not see the end goal, the end point to it, but it really helps you develop the important work ethic and the habits that you need to succeed in university. It really is a, uh, a game changer from high school to university life to be inundated with so much material that you feel like there's no way that you can complete it in time, to have deadlines and extracurriculars and so much stuff bombarding you. And yet when you have when you have a few things under your belt through IB, I think that you'll find it's really reassuring. Uh, for example, as Nicola mentioned, uh, she had done her extended essay and it really helped her with a paper. And um, for me, I have to write my honors thesis since I'm in my last year, uh, which will be in, due in March or April. And having done the extended essay and no other significant writing work in university, 
Um, you know, if I hadn't done the extended essay, I would have been a lot more worried. But now knowing how to, you know, how to handle references and um, such a, a, a vast amount of material, I feel a lot more confident in that way. And that can be said about uh, the planning labs and historical investigations and all that other stuff that you guys have to do. It might seem like it's pointless at this point in time, uh, but I think that once you've gained per the perspective of university life after a few years, you will have seen that um, it, all those things really, really are useful. Um, and the second, really, uh, the second big thing I wanted to mention was the group of people um, that you surround yourself with um, in, in IV life. Um, I'm sure you guys are from you know, LaSalle, Tecumseh, Windsor, all around the county. And that's a really, really unique feature of this school. And I think that it's something that you can all take advantage of to learn from such diverse peers. You're around people who are so motivated and ambitious and you know, driven. And that's something that you will encounter again in university life. And having that, you know, uh, having, being able to settle into that earlier, it really is beneficial. Um, you'll meet people, um, likely, who have been uh, all around the world and have so many different experiences. I go to McGill University, which is in Montreal, and I think 30% of our population is international, which means they're not even from Canada. And I think the other, another 25 or 30% is from outside of Quebec, uh, and then the remaining portion is from Quebec. So, you know, having these people who have all done um, so many great things in their lives, and so many people have done um, advanced placements or A-levels, which is the British system, and for you to have an additional tool of preparation really grants you a big amount of international perspective, and you'll be, you know, ready to keep up with them, because first year is a transition year, but I think that IB can really uh, help you out with the process, especially even though um, your standard level um, courses don't give you credits, I think that they'll put you miles ahead of the competition who haven't taken them. Um, back in my day, it was uh, Mr. Chevalier, who has since retired, uh, and he taught us calculus notes, and I, I threw them out after my second year, but I, I was looking through them, and we had been taught, um, in, back in, in SL math, we had been taught things that were taught in first year or second year calc. So being introduced to these concepts really helps to solidify them when you're learning them for a second time in university, and everybody else is just being exposed for the first time. And um, there's other big, big benefits to, um, to doing, let's say, your higher level subjects where you can gain credits. I'm sure that your teachers have mentioned how uh, your higher level credits might allow you to uh, not have to do certain courses in university. And for me, that um, I, I plan to go to medical school next year, and many of them need English as a prerequisite. But since they took higher level English, a lot of the schools will accept that, and therefore I don't even have to take English at the university level. And that really frees up time to do electives or do other courses that you're interested in. So, you know, there's so many benefits to it. I think that if any of you want to get in touch with me, uh, you can do so by telling one of your teachers, I guess, and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. But for my own personal experience, I found that IB helped me both with these tangible benefits and in surrounding uh, myself with a group of like-minded people who uh, all share the same uh, goals and ambition that I did. So I've, I've really uh, enjoyed that time, and I hope that you guys will persevere, even though it might seem daunting at times. I think that you guys can overcome any challenges that are in your way.
No, I was just going to say that um, one of the things that IB te teaches you, uh, which is really valuable, is the independent learning style, which is what you're going to have to adapt to in university for sure. Uh, in high school, everything is is really given to you for the most part. You know, you guys are assigned homework. You guys are, um, you know, reminded of the dates of tests over and over again. And, and that kind of thing really does go away in these larger classes. Um, you know, the prof will hand out the syllabus in the first day and say, this is the, mid this is the midterm day, this is the final day, here's the material I expect you guys to know. Uh, and then there will be, you know, the post material. But for the most part, it's really independent. And so being able to have um, standardized tests and, and assignments, I guess, that you guys have to complete on your own time will really help you develop that. And for myself, I had to transition to second year uh, organic chemistry right away because I got credits for each other. And that was, that was one of the scariest things in my first year, for sure, was uh, because you know that's known as like one of the death courses in, uh, in science, <laughs> is organic chemistry. And yet, like, you know, like it, it really wasn't too bad because um, I found that I had a good foundation in chemistry, uh, thanks to Mrs. Suwiki, I don't know if she's here, but anyway. Uh, I had a good foundation in chemistry, and, um, and I knew how to independently learn. I was resourceful. Um, you know, like if you have questions, you can go to the prof's office hours, and there's really, there are the resources that exist to support you. You just have to be able to seek them out yourself. All right, so hypothetically, let's say you get exempted from a first-year course. Now, do you have to take the second-year course, or can you take the first year if you want to, to like perhaps boost your average or something like that? That's something that's completely university dependent. I know I go to McGill. Uh, they do, fortunately or unfortunately, they force you to take the credits if you declare them once you apply. Um, so for me, I, I declared, you know, I'm going to have an OSSD and IB diploma, and they said that I have to send in my IB transcript once I receive my grades, and if it qualifies, I think you need a six to get the credits, and if you meet that criteria, then you must accept the credits. I know um, many. Um, Ontario universities, I think that that's not the case. I think that you can redo them. My sister, um, she's, she's their age, uh, she's at Western, and uh, I know she took HL Chem, and she's taking first year Chem again. So it's something that you really have to research yourself depending on where you want to go to school, and you have to determine their policies. I did know the policy before I went to school, and I was ready to, you know, to deal with that. Um, another thing is what program you're going into. So for sciences, I was exempt from English, but since I'm in a science program, I didn't have to take the second level English. So I was able to just get exempt and throw in an elective. So that was my experience with being exempt from a course. So by the end of the year, Mr. Nyker is gonna come in with a slip of paper that says, do you want to send your IB scores to three universities for free? And I actually did not make that choice because <coughs> I decided to place in first year chemistry and first year math, which were basically repeats of what I learned in high school to boost my pre-med GPA. And that's a choice that I did and a lot of other kids also did um, in the States. And with that, it's just a review of the topics that you picked up in high school. Um, it also lets you build a better foundation, I would say. But there are also a lot of kids who took their credits and went right into first year organic chemistry which is a really stressful situation. So it just depends on what you want to do with your first year of university. If you want to make the transition a little easier or you want to go right ahead and you know what you want to do. Yeah, my, I was in a similar situation too. Um, so I got the credits for all three of my HL subjects. So um, I only need one English credit in university. So I got to actually skip it. Phew, <laughs> goodness. Um, and I also got the credit for biology too, but I thought, like Gloria, you know, I'm in uh, a science program, so it would be really good to uh, kind of take that course and just solidify the concepts again, just so I go even more prepared into that second year course. So I, I did take the English, but I opted against using the biology credit just because that was my specific program. And I also took the history credit too. Thank goodness. <laughs> for those of you who go to American schools, did you feel like you were you were behind everyone else because you weren't learning the same curriculum as the Americans. And uh, do you have to take any classes because because you're a Canadian citizen, like history, American history, or anything like that? Um, so in the States, no one really does IB. What's more prominent is the AP, which is advanced placement. Um, but what I found was that even though all these kids had AP, what you cover in IB does cover most of what they do and it also goes beyond. So when I entered a lot of my classes um, with kids with AP backgrounds, 
it all worked out because we all had a very similar um, core knowledge set where, that we could all work from. And as an international student, <laughs> um, there aren't any classes that you are forced to take with regards to like American history, education, um, but I did take an American education class just because I thought it would be interesting to learn about their um, curriculum just in case I wanted to stay in the U.S. to work. Okay, so my answer is a little bit different than Gloria's. I'm actually, since I'm uh, planning on attending graduate school at Wayne State, I'm forced to take some of their American history classes, but that's not just because I'm Canadian. So even the American students who are American citizens coming in to Wayne State are forced to take American political science, Detroit history, so we all have to take that regardless. Um, but yes, we, you, you may encounter a situation where you have to take some American specific classes, but they're honestly not that bad because we know how to apply ourselves and we have such like a, a broad background in history that learning stuff like that, it, it, it's not, it's not going to be as scary as you, as you think it is. You just have to apply yourself. It's like any other course. Being in the program, um, knowing that you, you were taking courses that maybe are a little more difficult, how does that affect your opportunity for scholarships, going into university, applying, and maybe once you're there and being able to keep those scholarships? Okay, yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, it's obviously one that's really important uh, to fund your education. And um, scholarships are one thing that universities look to to reward people who are well-rounded and also academically gifted. Um, so I know at, Mi at McGill we have um, major renewable scholarships, which means that they're paid out every year a certain lump sum. And I think there's about 160 to 170 of them paid out every year. And um, during the application, they want to see people who have diverse life experiences and who also do well in school. And from the academic side, um, there is a conversion uh, from IB to OSSD grades that is, that is very fair. And if that's the side that you're concerned about, then it's, it's um, not too much of a worry because if you are successful in your studies, uh, then the teachers will recognize that and you will uh, achieve the uh, academic requirements that you need. And what's really great about IB is that it also encourages you to get involved and get out there in your school community and in the wider uh, county community also. And that's stuff that uh, schools want to see as well. And so, you know, I was fortunate enough to be awarded the scholarship and I have, um, I think that a big part of it is because I was very involved in my school and that was greatly encouraged um, through the IB. You know, um, I, I was part of student council and I did debate and other things. So those kinds of things are the, are the activities that you want to be involved in uh, to show that you um, are more than just school, and yet IB also gives you the oppor opportunity to do well academically as well. All right, so I'm going to discuss kind of like a little different side of it, or um, something different you guys may encounter when you apply to university. So I go to an American school, so unfortunately, since I'm a Canadian citizen, I didn't qualify for any any scholarships to the university. But um, it's not the end of the world. So scholarships are important, and like Ryan said, funding your education is, you know, it. it you need to do it, it's important, but it's not the end of the world. So for me, I felt I was more, um, I felt better about going into my university with a strong body of knowledge that I've developed from the IB program than going into university with, you know, a $5,000, $10,000 scholarship because ultimately, you know, sometimes the things that universities don't tell you is that to keep that scholarship, you have to maintain certain marks, which can be really difficult. So, you know, a, a lot of people who end up going into university with those scholarships, you know, they, they might lose those scholarships. But at the end of the day, if you're going in with a strong academic background, you know, you're going to you're gonna um, just power through university and you're going to get into those graduate schools. And if someone, you know, has that scholarship, they might not eventually get into the graduate school that they want and may not attain their career goals because they don't have that strong body of knowledge. So that's just kind of... That's kind of my alternative way to look at scholarships, that it's not the end of the end of the world. You know, it, it is a nice thing to have, but if you don't attain them, you know, like, like I said, it, it shouldn't be, uh, you guys shouldn't work yourselves up over it. Um, just really do your best and remember that when you go to university, you're really prepared, um, you know, against other, against other students who don't have the IB, so. Um, since the majority of you are grade 11 and 10, you have a little bit of time to worry about this, but if you're in grade 12 and once you get to grade 12, you're worried about your grades not being um, high enough for you to achieve a high lump sum of money from a scholarship. Uh, I also want to make it apparent that there are other scholarships that are, have lower value, like $1,000, $2,500. And if you apply to enough of those, you will accumulate enough money to make up that large scholarship. 
Uh, that's what I did. So there's other ways to get around those problems of grades if you have that problem. Um, so always look at your options and, um, and kind of be street smart in that way so you can get around that, that little loop and then, um, and then you'll be set to go for university. So I just want to remind everyone that when you're applying for really big scholarships, you're going to be competing against kids from Ottawa, Toronto, all these big cities. And all these students have taken advanced placement courses or IB courses. So when you apply and say you have IB courses, that indicates to the admission committee that you've worked hard in, univers uh, in high school and that you can su succeed in university. Um, also, when you're applying to Canadian schools, you're going to send in only six OSSD marks. So you can pick and choose what you want to send in so that it's set up in a way that it really helps you. And I would say, most importantly, talk to your teachers. Ask them, hey, I really want to get this scholarship. Is there any way I can improve my mark um, if I work really hard in this class? So my name is Ryan Chan. I go to McGill University. I'm finishing up my fourth year in honors immunology with a minor in economics. And uh, I plan to go to medical school next year. And I really benefited greatly from the IB program. I think that it provided me great tools for success, both in the um, academic endeavors that I was able to undertake and also many extracurricular activities. I think that it was you know, so um, amazing to have all these opportunities. And you know, and being surrounded with so many like-minded individuals who are as ambitious and motivated as, as I was, was really helpful um, to, uh, to facilitating my university uh, transition. Hi, my name is Gloria Zhang. I'm currently attending Duke University. I'm a pre-med student with a major in global health. Um, I just wanted to say that Assumption was a truly wonderful place that really gave me the opportunity to shine and try whatever I wanted to do. I had amazing teachers that supported me, and I also had wonderful friends who motivate, motivated me throughout the way. So I just want to say that hopefully that you take this IB journey with us here at Assumption, and that it will take you places that you never thought you were going to go.